What's going on everybody? This is Afro Think Tank. Today I want to talk about uh, the migrant crisis that's affecting the people in New York, Chicago, and, and plenty, of, plenty, uh, plenty of other places, right? And I keep trying to tell you guys I'm fair, right? I keep it real and I'm fair, right down the middle, I'm not biased. Now, these, these this migrant immigrant uh, crisis that's happening in New York and Chicago, we call them a crisis now only because in democratic states are they having to deal with it right see before it was happening on the border states which are all mostly republican states so all the rich democrats that live on the east coast and live in these big cities and they don't have to never see it or deal with it the poli the, the um repercussions of certain policies that we have on a federal level right we got to deal with it and but the guys in new york chicago they never had to deal with it right so they always was apathetic about the plight of the Republican, the, the red states, the, where the majority Republicans, when they're talking about the border and all this stuff. Now, in reality, Donald Trump didn't build shit, all right? Donald Trump didn't build shit. He built 50 miles, or 50 miles of the border, and that's all he, that, that's, that's all he built, right? But, you know, the reason why he can't build, and this is the truth, the reason why they can't build a wall, do you, have you seen the border? It's impossible to literally put a wall. It's impossible to put, what's going on, man? It's impossible. It's literally impossible, impossible to put a border wall on our southern border. That's the thing the politicians are not telling you. It's impossible and impractical. You have deserts, mountain ranges. It's just not, it's not, it's not practical. Plus the majority of illegal immigrants actually fly over here and overstay their visas. Those are true. But what's happening right now is that the federal government is not giving the states the money they need to deal with the influx of these asylum seekers. And the thing about asylum seeking, if you know anything about seeking asylum, is different from illegal immigrants just crossing the border. Usually, uh, what it is is they're coming from a place of extreme danger, and and they can seek uh, economic um, economic asylum. They can seek uh, you know asylum for you know for their life or whatever you know because it's dangerous and things like that. And it's an epidemic in Central and South America that we in North America got to deal with because we have the, you know, this is the, the, the home of, of the immigrants who run away from where they from to come here. That's like this place was designed that way. Everybody knows America was designed for if you got issues in your country, you come here. That's literally what we're here for. That's, that's what it's about, right? And New York has always been the beacon of that type of immigration, right? But what's happening now is because, you know, Things, times are getting harder, and times may be hard for us Americans, as we know, right? Things are rough. Things cost a lot of money. You know, inflation. We know the corporations don't care. They're gouging us. They're they overcharging us for food. They're overcharging us for, for rent. They don't want to rate increase our freaking pay. They, they're basically making us slaves again. They're basically, basically taking us back to slavery. Everybody's becoming a slave. Slowly but surely, we're becoming more and more slave-like as a society. Back the way they like it low overhead high profit margins period and if if this doesn't show you that the democrats don't actually give a shit about you this should show it right here because joe biden ain't doing shit about this now the state legislators the state the governor the mayors of even the democratically elected democrat mayors and governors of both chicago and new york are both complaining that the federal government is not doing anything to help them Right. You got state budgets. But when it comes to asylum seeking, usually the federal government is supposed to step in, declare an emergency and give them emergency federal funds. Right. To deal with the crisis. But Joe Biden don't give a shit about that because Joe Biden's too busy dealing with uh, America's interests overseas. Right. The thing that all the rich corporations want care about. They don't care about us. Corporations never cared about this. They only care about their interests. Right. And if we don't fall in line with their interests, it don't matter. Right. So like the Democrats, this is what they do. See, the, the Democrats, they're not trying to kill us. They're not, they're not, they're not other persuasion of you, you niggers, we gotta get rid of y'all. They're not on that racist tip, they're on that money tip. They they they're about the green, right? And they don't you can participate in the corruption in the corporate, you know, um dogma if you want. You can be black, white, Asian, Spanish, they don't care. It's all inclusive with corruption on the Democratic side. On the Republican side, it's exclusive, right? Gotta be white male. If you're a white male, you, you know, you can you can play ball if you black or, or Indian or something you can sit outside We'll toss you some biscuits every now and then we'll pat you on the head, you know But you can't come inside. All right, but you can stand outside We'll get your doggy house and all that shit put a nice little chain on you and we'll feed you like three times a day That's what the, the Republicans do. 
right? But either way, these are both two wings of the same bird, right? This bird of white supremacy, right? And how they use different various tools of that supremacy, whether it be classism, corporatism, racism, whatever they got to do to get what they want. It's all about the interest, the people at the top, right? So the federal government don't give a shit that these democratic, democratic states now got to deal with the shit that the Republican states got to deal with, right? And the difference is the democratic states are usually places of high population already, right? High population, high prices. So we take 10,000 uh, um, 10, asylum seekers and you slap them in a city that's already overpopulated, that's already stressed out, it's going to cause some issues. Everybody going to start having problems. Everybody, even people who never thought or even cared about uh, immigration because that shit was something that happened down there on the border, border, border states and you never had to see it now. They're starting to see what those people down there, the Republicans be talking about down there at the border, you know, when they say the influx of immigration coming in, taking over their towns. Right. But at the same time, at the same time, I'm like, how can you tell these Native Americans not to move about their own natural, you know, like this is their home. Right. Africa for the Africans, Asia for the Asians. Shouldn't North America be for the Native American? I mean, I'm just, I'm just saying. But either way, this is where we at now, right? So the people there are complaining, you know, about on, they've been complaining for years about this border. Now, realistically, they're never built, they're never built a border, right? And first of all, even if they did build a wall, people would go underneath the wall, over top of the wall. Look, the Great Wall of China didn't work. Keep Mongols out. It was actually a great failure, actually. It didn't really accomplish anything. Only thing that it accomplished was you're able to see the Bama's coming from a mile away, but it didn't stop them from taking over or coming over the wall. So that wall is, is an archaic symbol of, of, of separation, but it never works. That's the thing. The wall ain't going to do shit, right? Walls are meant to be knocked down, going underneath it, climbed over top of, right? So, but anyway, I just want to, you know, acknowledge that this immigration system system is an issue right and the thing is it's built into our legislation right this is a federal this is a policy that we have to find a way to deal with we have to either spread the burden out to be honest spread the burden out speed up the process of asylum seekers because it's easy for people here who's already suffering right it's easy for people here who are suffering already we got our own issues here and it's hard to empathize when you got 12,000 people in your neighborhood sucking up your resources, especially the resources that is hard as hell for you as a black person to even get. Because it seemed like the same government that's supposed to be helping you, right, that take your tax money and don't help you. They take your tax money out your check, out your mortgage, out your car note and everything else you pay, out your sales tax. And they make sure they get siphoned over to those rich white people neighborhoods where they get their roads done. They get the sanitation comes out and picks their shit up three, four times a week. They get all the funding for their schools. And guess what? Ain't not a near nutter illegal or, or asylum seeker going to be put anywhere close to their neighborhoods because they're going to make sure that that doesn't happen. But all us, all us peasants, all us regular folk down here, guess what? Here, they're going to stuff some more. Huh? Everybody, everybody crowd in because they don't have to worry about it. So all these politicians that are making these decisions, they're not personally affected by it. These Democrats, these corporate Democrats, Right, they're not personally affected by just thinking. They're just thinking about this. Damn, you know what? At some point, all these uh, these we can we can use these guys that's over here. We're gonna put them in 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 in, in low paying jobs, and we can have them produce things for our corporation. Don't think that don't think the corporation don't want these illegal immigrants or these asylum seekers over here. You don't don't think these corporations don't want them over here. Don't think these corporations don't advertise. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Come on over here. Just cross the border. Yeah, yeah. No problem. No problem. We'll we'll deal with the legalities later. Because corporations are in the business of making money. That means they need people to work for them for cheap. They can't do slavery no more. So they can't just have you work for free, which they would prefer, right? They would prefer that. They can't do indentured servitude no more, even though they still do it. But they got to pay you something, right? Because we got standards, which corporations hate because of those regulations. That's why they're always trying to undo regulations. Because if they undo regulations that the federal government and state governments place upon them, then they can do whatever they want. It's just the wild, wild west. Just like after the Donald Trump undid regulations for the transportation industry and the train and, and for the for the railroads, that's why after that we got a whole bunch of derailments because now trains can go faster, they can overload their cargo, they can do all sorts of stuff because the regulations that were meant to be put in there to protect people and protect property are lifted. So they're just like wow, wow, west. So we got all sorts of derailments, destroying neighborhoods, dropping chemicals. That's just the way corporations work. They messy. They nasty. They don't care. It's about that dollar. They will destroy your community for the dollar. And then after they destroy it, they're going to leave and pretend like you don't exist, West Virginia. All right. So 
either way, I just want to say that I'm with, you know, I'm with, I, I understand. You know, it's not happening here in Washington, D.C. In Washington, D.C., our biggest issue is homelessness. It's shit's next level, right? And that's the issue that every state's having. So on top of our homelessness and, and on top of the people that were in the middle class that's fallen to the lower class, the people who are struggling every day, grow, you buy two fit items at the grocery store, you done spent 100 bucks, everybody is stressed out. So the extra burden of other people from other countries who are also stressed out coming on here is just hard to deal with, but we got to find a way to do it. And another, But another thing is, ask yourself why are these people coming over here? Do you want to know why these people are coming over here? Because American policies destroy their countries. American policies destroy their countries in Central and South America, and mainly Central America. It's the it's the Second Amendment and and the, and the fact that everybody want to be able to buy guns without any regulations, so that the corporations can sell those guns that's uncounted and unregulated to the Mexican cartels because they buy guns. They spend a lot of money on guns and bullets and weapons. It ain't Joe Smo down the street. That the, that the NRA cares about is the Migos and, uh, across the border who buying up big packages of gun, guns. And the only reason, the only way they're going to be able to do that is if there's no regulations on the sales of guns. That's why they got all you little peasants out here talking about all, you all here championing, championing the policies that do nothing but kill your people on the streets. Because every time somebody gets stressed out, they do what? Reach for their gun and they kill each other because they can't handle it. They're not trained. They're just a bunch of mentally ill Americans with guns, right? And then they send a bunch of weapons to and empower all those cartels so they can have military-grade weapons killing each other, destroying neighborhoods, and forcing these people to leave their neighborhoods that they can't even step outside without worrying about getting shot and killed to come to this great American country that we benefit off the pains of those people. Understand there's a reason why everybody flee here. It's because of American policies and other American policies, not just the guns, but the various other things. How we like drugs. America loves to consume drugs. So we buy up all the cartels' drugs, and in exchange, we sell them weapons for cheap. So we create the environment in Central America to where it's a volatile, hostile environment. You know, same way they did in black neighborhoods. When they threw crack in the neighborhoods, they started dropping off guns and shit. And all of a sudden, we became hyper-violent individuals in our neighborhood, desperate people do desperate things, right? So the same thing they did to us is the same thing they do to an entire freaking Central and Southern America, right? And then we complain when the results or the side effects of those policies that we have so that our corporations can make all the money they want, we gotta, the peasants, we gotta be the ones to deal with it because these people don't have to deal with it because they live in gated communities far away from everybody. You understand? So think about that. So it's, it's, that's why I'm always saying don't cape for Democrats. Don't cape for Republicans. We need to cape for ourselves. We need to create a party of ourselves and conglomerate in ourselves. And it shouldn't matter how long it takes us to galvanize us together to make a respectable party. But if we were to do something like that, then we would get more respect if we had a concentrated vote and we could start demanding policies that benefit us directly, the same way them other groups do. But until we do that, we just gonna have to play the game like everybody else was forced to play the game with these two parties that we have no choice if we wanna participate in the, in the process if we want to participate in the process, which we should because we, our ancestors died so that we can participate in the political process, we should participate, but we should give ourselves more choices than choices that the corporation give us and make us fight over every two to four years. Anyway, that's all I got to say. It's Afro Think Tank. Learn some, teach some. I'm out.